Hello everyone, I'm Jack Fisher and welcome to my world. And when you've been reading superhero comics as long as I have, you tend to get a feel for which characters have potential, which are destined to be special, and which are doomed to obscurity. Now it's not always obvious at first, but the signs are usually there. Nobody had to be a hardcore comic fan to sense that Spider-Gwen, Miles Morales, or Kamala Khan were going to be big. Shortly after they debuted, their potential was obvious. It was just a matter of time, development, and refinement. But for other characters, it doesn't happen quite that quickly. Sometimes they have to take the long road to stardom. And even after they've been around for a while, you still don't know if they have true staying power or if they're destined to be a short-term gimmick. And that brings me to Cindy Moon, AKA Silk a character who debuted in the pages of Amazing Spider-Man back in 2014 and has since become a big part of the larger Spider-Man family. And of all the new characters to debut in the past decade, she was the one I was least certain about. As a character, she had an intriguing concept from the get-go. Years ago, a radioactive spider bit a teenage boy named Peter Parker, ultimately granting him the power to become the Amazing Spider-Man. Everybody knows that story. But then, we also learned that same spider bit someone else that fateful day. And that someone was Cindy Moon. I admit, I found that concept intriguing. I wasn't the only one either. Cindy Moon evoked a great deal of interest, even before she showed up in Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3, Issue 1. But after reading that issue and those that followed, I still wasn't sold. No, don't get me wrong. The story was good. It started with a revelation. Spider-Man never knew about Cindy, or that the spider that bit him had bitten someone else. He only learned during the events of Original Sin, a major Marvel crossover event in which major secrets for multiple characters were exposed. But once Peter learned of her, he immediately sought her out, having learned that she'd been living in a bunker for over a decade. But once he freed Cindy from that bunker, things only got more complicated and confrontational and even a bit seamy, but I won't get too much into that. The most critical part of Cindy Moon's story revolves around why she was in that bunker to begin with and who influenced her after she got her powers. And that's where Ezekiel Sims enters the picture. Now, fans of Spider-Man comics will know that name and rightly cringe for Cindy. He's part Norman Osborn and part Doctor Strange, an unscrupulous businessman who also dabbles in magic, which he eventually used to get Spider-Man-like powers. He's not necessarily evil, but he does like to stalk and manipulate Spider-Man for his own ends. That's been his MO for much of his existence. But what he did to Cindy Moon went several steps beyond that. He sought her out shortly after she was bitten, and by then, she was already manifesting her powers. Her parents and her younger brother were rightly concerned. Then Ezekiel shows up, claiming he wants to help. And for a while, he does just that, training her to control her powers as best as any teenage girl can. Under him, she starts to become her superhero persona, Silk. But eventually, his efforts become considerably less altruistic, something that happens a lot with Ezekiel Sims. He tells Cindy that another major Spider-Man enemy, Morlun, is going to hunt her down. And the only way to stay safe is to remain in a bunker, when she can freely leave at any time, but shouldn't for the sake of herself and her family. Now, without spoiling too much of the stories that spin out of this, I'll say this made for a solid foundation for Cindy Moon. It was considerably different from Peter Parker's story, as well as other popular iterations like Spider-Gwen and Miles Morales. And I really thought it gave her potential. She was poised to become a very different kind of Spider-Man character. But for a while, I felt like much of that potential went unrealized. In the issues following her debut, she was somewhat erratic, both in terms of personality as well as her overall story. There were times where you really weren't sure if Cindy was going to be a villain for Spider-Man, an ally, a lover, a rival, or just one of those side characters who disappears after a while, a la Carly Cooper. 
she seemed to be a little of everything for those first few arcs. And personally, I wasn't sure if I should get overly attached to her. Marvel has thrown away great characters and concepts in the past. And around this same time, the market for new Spider-Man characters was getting crowded, especially after Spider-Gwen debuted that same year. For that reason, and plenty others, I stopped following Silk. When she eventually got her own series, I didn't keep up with it. What was going on in the mainline Spider-Man comics took priority, especially once the big Spider-Verse event took hold. I planned on revisiting Cindy's story eventually, if only to see whether her potential had been realized or squandered. And I'm glad I did, because her story didn't just expand and evolve from those first few arcs. In that time, Cindy Moon genuinely won me over. She convinced me that Silk does have a place in the Marvel Universe and not just as a supporting character for Spider-Man. She is very much her own hero with her own unique struggles. And since that first issue, she has done a lot to set herself apart from Peter Parker, Miles Morales, and other affiliated Spider-Man characters. And that's critical because, let's face it, we've seen those stories before. We know that time-tested formula. Bitten by a spider, a loved one dies, they feel responsible, they use their powers to be a responsible superhero. It's a tried and true narrative. And it's worked for multiple characters, not named Peter Parker. But it was never going to work for Silk. And one of my concerns early on was that her story would eventually slip into all too familiar patterns. Thankfully, it didn't. And for once, it didn't require that a close family member die a radical concept by Spider-Man standards. And yet, family is still a big part of what makes Cindy Moon a hero. And that brings me to the arc that stood out most for me, the defining moment in which I became convinced that Cindy Silk Moon was worth embracing. It came during the big buildup to 2015's Secret War, Marvel's biggest crossover event of the decade. Before it began, Multiple comics had tie-in stories, often centered around what these characters were doing before the multiverse as they knew it fell apart. For Cindy, she made those last fateful moments count. While everything around her was literally falling apart, she gets a critical bit of information on her family, who she'd been searching for since she left the bunker. Her little brother, Albert Jr., might be alive living as a member of the Goblin Nation gang under the alias James Park. And it's J. Jonah Jameson, of all people, who helps her get this information. It's Cindy's first real chance to reunite with her family. And even as the world is ending, she tries to reach him. But along the way, she still doesn't let that stop her from being a hero. She helps people as best she can, meaning she has precious little time to share with Albert. When the moment finally comes, she embraces her little brother as everything around her fades. She tells him she loves him, and she apologizes for everything. It's such a powerful moment, and an important moment in terms of appreciating Cindy Moon's story. Taking a step back, here's a character who came into her powers by accident, as many other heroes do, including Peter Parker. But after getting them, her first instinct isn't to put on a costume and fight criminals. She was scared and overwhelmed. And that's understandable. She was just a teenager, whose life at that point mostly revolved around boys, grades, field hockey, and family. We see through various flashbacks just how much family means to Cindy. They're not oblivious or eccentric. There's never a sense that her parents are an obstacle or a hindrance. They love her, and they're scared for her and they want to protect her as much as she wants to protect them. But that's exactly what Ezekiel Sims exploits. That's what kept her in that bunker for so many years. That's what led her to stand by while her family went into hiding. That natural desire to protect her loved ones is what got Cindy to go along with Ezekiel. She really trusted him. It's not until years later that she realizes how big a mistake that was. As a result, her family is still in hiding when she emerges from that bunker. And she has no idea where they are, or even if they're still alive. 
And in a very real sense, she is responsible for what happened to them. She didn't choose to get these powers, but she did choose to trust Ezekiel Sims. And she chose to stay in that bunker until Peter came along and opened it. The burden of that choice and the responsibilities that come with it, that's the driving force in Silk's hero's journey. It's still very much in keeping with traditional Spider-Man themes, which always come back to great power with great responsibility. But for her, this mantra manifests in a very different way. In reuniting with her brother, the burden and the responsibility that comes with it become unique to the life and journey of Cindy Moon. The way she embraces him and apologizes to him, it just carries so much weight. It shows that she understands she's responsible for what happened. And she's willing to fight, fail, and struggle to make up for it. Even if it means navigating the end of the world. After that fateful issue, I began rooting for Cindy Moon. Through both tie-ins with other Spider-Man comics to her own solo series, I became a real fan of hers. And the more I read, the more I come to appreciate her story and her unique journey because I think it's as relevant as it is dramatic. In this day and age, you can't help but feel manipulated by so many forces. Everything you do, from the websites you visit, to the shows you watch, to the places you go, it all feels like everyone is trying to guide you in one way or the other. Whether they want you to join their club, buy their product, or believe their ideas, they all work to influence you. It feels like you can't escape but you still have to make choices in the midst of all these influences. And you are still responsible for the consequences of those choices. Manipulation is a key aspect of Silk's story. You could argue it was the most important factor after that fateful spider bite. Because it's one thing to be forced into a bad situation. It's quite another to be led into it, believing you're making the right choice, when in reality, you're just letting others dictate your options. Cindy genuinely thought she was doing what was best for herself and her family. People in the real world and in comics often do the same, never knowing if, how, or why they're being manipulated. It only becomes painfully clear with the benefit of hindsight. Now, it's not entirely Cindy's fault that she ended up in a bunker while her family went missing but it's still her responsibility. And like other Spider-Man characters before her, she shoulders that responsibility. Her story continues to evolve in the comics and it's very likely to manifest in other mediums as well, including the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's a story that took a while to blossom, but once it did, Cindy Silk Moon proved herself. She has the power she can handle the responsibility. And her story has made the Marvel Universe that much more amazing. Thanks for watching, everyone. And thanks for joining me in my world. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, take care and stay safe.